Almost 80% of so-called able-bodied Canadians have a job. But if you're dealing with a disability, it's less than half who have a job. Joining us now to tell us what employers can do to change that number, in Richmond, Virginia, via Skype, there's Deborah Rue. She is Global Disability Inclusion Strategist and Head of Rue Global Communications. And Deborah, we're happy to have you on the line via Skype from the Commonwealth of Virginia. Good to have you on TVO tonight. How are you? I'm doing great, Steve. Thank you for having me. Not at all. I'd like to start by asking what your motivation was for getting involved in employing people with disabilities. Well, my motivation, I was in the banking industry for many years, and um, I'm a proud mother of two grown children now, and my oldest daughter, is uh, she was born with Down syndrome, and um, she has been my motivation all along the way, and she's really been a muse to me as well. She's been, uh, she's made her life pretty amazing. And how old is um, she now, Deborah? Husband, she's 27 years old. Gotcha. And what kinds of jobs were so-called experts telling you over the years that she would, quote unquote, only be capable of doing? Well, the, the experts suggested that she could bring shopping carts in from the malls, the Target or the Walmarts. And that was their reach goal. And um, I decided that I really thought my daughter could do so much more than that. So instead of complaining about what they suggested, I decided to try to become part of the solution. And what did you discover in trying to become part of that solution? <laughs> Well, I discovered it is very, very hard to start your own business and to keep it profitable. <laughs> but um, I, I was in the banking industry and technology and training. And so I created a technology company here in the United States called Tech Access. And over 80% of our team were uh, technologists with disabilities. And so um, I discovered, uh, I really thought it was a great idea. And it was embraced by a lot of the big multinational companies companies, um, including uh, Canadian companies. Taleo was one of our customers and TD Bank, for example. And, um, but it, it's, it's really, really hard having your own uh, business. It's very hard. It's very rewarding and very hard. What is it you were actually trying to do, though? Well, I was a technology company. And at first, what we were going to do, I started it in 2001. So we were going to do web design us and millions of other companies. And so around that time in the United States, we were updating our Rehabilitation Act, which was including Section 508, which said that our, our United States government had to make sure all of their technology was accessible. So we decided that it, it would be, make sense to have a technology company that helped our government and corporations actually make sure that their technology and the services and solutions they were providing to um, citizens as well as you know other agencies were fully accessible to people with disabilities. Who better to let you know than people with disabilities? So you put them sort of, uh, you included them in the mission. How did that work? It worked wonderful. We had great, great, wonderful successes and I had some great, terrible, glorious failures as well along the way. I, I made a lot of classic, uh, a lot of mistakes that, um, I, you know, I, I spent more than I made. I hired before I was really ready. I, I made a lot of rookie mistakes. I didn't know what I was doing, but I also made, you know, achieved a lot of really amazing goals and, and changed a lot of people's lives too. How many people do you suspect? Uh, I would suspect thousands of people because not only were I, uh, I was impacting my employees, but also um, because we were dealing with such large businesses, uh, like once again, the TD banks of the world, that's, you know, they're not only in Canada, they're in other countries as well, but uh, the IBMs, the Microsoft, the AT&Ts, they were able to work with some of my employees that were considered very, very disabled and to see the talent that was coming out of the small technology company and they actually started, some of those companies started, you know, luring my employees away, which at the time I was glad, but I also hated as an employer because you're taking away my talented employees, but it, at the same time, you have to be glad with the sort of the irony of the situation sure. at the same time. Can you give us, Deborah, some sense about the range of disabilities that you were that you were dealing with? 
Yes, we were very diverse, very diverse company. Um, we had people that were blind. We had um, an intern that was blind and deaf. We had people that uh, were uh, had autism, Down syndrome, not as many. Most of our employees were, um, they had mental health or physical disabilities like um, cerebral palsy, MS, MD, uh, traumatic brain injuries. It, it was paraplegic, quadriplegic. We were just very diverse. Um, I had the company from 2001 until 2011. In 2011, I merged it with another business. But so it, we were very diverse with all different kinds of disabilities, um, including one woman, for example, that was born with cerebral palsy, but she, her words, that when she lies down, all she can do is blink her eyes, but she is a brilliant technologist and content developer. Hmm. And so what we did was we used technology so that she could actually help our customers understand if their products were or were not accessible. And our clients loved it. So you, through your own personal experience with having a Down syndrome daughter and also through dealing with all of these people with various disabilities, clearly have discovered that the disabled have a significant contribution to make and can be good employees. What do you think holds other businesses back from apparently sharing those views? Because we know that lots of them do. Well, I think it's still the fear of the unknown. I know that a lot of times I have employers tell me, well, I'm afraid if I, I hired them, I would find out our bathrooms aren't accessible or, or doing something wrong. And I know in the United States, we're very big on litigation in the United States. And so employers are afraid to hire people with these, especially significant disabilities, because they're afraid they won't be productive. And if they don't do their jobs, they won't be able to get rid of them. So they're they're very fearful of the abilities and and technology has changed what many many people with the severest of disabilities can do and they're problem solvers because if you're born into the world and or you've acquired a disability that and now you can't see or you can't hear or you can't use your hands or your legs you become a really good problem solver, which has uh, amazing advantages to businesses. Are there then clear guidelines in place, either by the state or by the national government, uh, which indicate uh, the do's and don'ts if you're hiring somebody with a disability? There are. They are all over the world. And Canada certainly has made a lot of efforts to do this. You have um, ODA, the... Um, I always have to look, uh, accessibility for Ontarians with disabilities, you've got human rights laws in Canada, um, the US we have our Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, also a really big one is the United Nations Convention on the Rights for Persons with Disabilities. Um, Canada signed, th that was one of the first countries to sign it and ratified it. We still haven't done it in the United States. We've signed it, but we haven't ratified it. And so there are very clear well, um, guidelines, and there's a lot of amazing disability groups that will help employers if they're confused as well. But the Canadian government's done quite a bit with pro, you know, getting the information out there to employers, but there's still the fear of the unknown. Deborah, I always wondered why progress was as slow as it was on this issue, given that uh, for at least a decade, maybe longer, the Senate Majority Leader in your country was Bob Dole, a guy who, you know, half his body didn't work because of injuries sustained in World War II. I mean, he ran for president one year, so it's, I mean, clearly Americans have seen a man with a significant disability reach almost the highest office in the land. What do you think still holds people back from realizing the contribution that disabled people can make? Well, I think some of it in the United States is the we, we've created accidentally an us and them mentality. And we have many times um, the community, the advocates, and I'm sort of an advocate in business. So I play both in both worlds. But the advocates tell employers they're not doing enough and you better hurry up and we're going to sue you. And so there's this, this fighting going on back and forth. And many times we'll see uh, Disney's a perfect example. Disney Disney has, paid, has spent a lot of money and efforts making sure that if you want to come and have a magical experience with Disney all over the world, 
they want you to come. And so the American Foundation of the Blind a few years ago gave them an award, their highest award, the Eagle Award, for the efforts that they had made to include uh, persons with vision impairment and blindness in the parks. Three months later, a group of citizens got together that are part of the National Federation of the Blind and sued them for not doing enough for people that are blind and vision impaired. So I'm not arguing the merits of the case, but it confuses employers um, and corporations a lot. Do you think that governments need to, uh, and I'm just throwing it out as an example, maybe offer special subsidies of some kind uh, to encourage employers to hire people with disabilities? Um, I do not think that, and I know that sounds probably odd, but we've seen, um, it's happened a lot. As a matter of fact, the Canadian government will help. And I do think it's important that they do that to help, like maybe with accommodations to buy screen readers and assistive technology. But I don't think that you should do it um, saying, if you hire this person with a disability, I'm going to give you some money, only because that implies that that person with disability is does not have the same quali quality and um, qualifications that others without disabilities have. And so I've seen as I go around the world with this topic, you sort of have to be careful with, with that and quotas, quite frankly, because people with disabilities, we know for sure, add value to the workforce. And we have many examples all over the world, including including lots of wonderful examples in Canada. Uh, go to TD Bank. They're employing people with disabilities. You're Tim Hortons. Um, you know, there's some really interesting things that have happened. RIM is another example. They've done some really cool things to make sure that the BlackBerry is accessible to all of us. So what will it take, in your view, to get us to some point in the future, hopefully sooner rather than later, where employers looking for employees will we'll start seeing the ability more than the disability. What needs to happen? I think we need to do wh exactly what you're doing, Steve, and I applaud you for this. You have to talk about these good stories. Just because a person is blind or they're born with a disability or they acquire a disability doesn't mean they don't have things to add. I think you've got to do, we've got to get the media involved. We've got to get, Steve, you talking about these stories. And I'm very, very big on social media. And we've got to talk about the stories on social media. And people with disabilities also have to, you know, step up and have their voice is heard and I think parents have to do what I did you have to say yeah no 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 I'm gonna be part of the solution I'm not just gonna complain about you not including my daughter you're going to include my daughter and this is how I'm gonna help you do it well all right in our last minute then just the, the one thing that I do hear frequently from critics is I can't afford to do this I can't afford to put in the extra ramp I can't afford to make my area wheelchair accessible I can't afford to you know translate everything into Braille that's the kind of criticism you hear what would you say on that? Well, I would say that um, you can't afford not to do it. There's one in seven people with disabilities in the world, according to the World Health Organization. And remember, it's not just about people with disabilities. It's about the people that love of somebody with a disability and also be careful about assuming you can't do it you can't make everything braille we're not asking you to make everything braille yes we do want access to take our wheelchairs and to your store or your bank but there are some very practical ways to do it and you've got some great organizations that'll help you but you can't afford not to do it you can't afford not to do it there's too many of us that we're you're talking about and if we know you're doing it we will we will um, buy your devices and your products and your banking, and it will reward you for it. Deborah, it's awfully good and of you to join us. And you get great employees. I'm sorry. That, that, is, that is also something we hear all the time as well. Yes. Uh, it's awfully good of you to join us on TVO tonight, Deborah. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Steve. We really appreciate you talking about this topic. Not at all. That's what we do here. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.